please stand. Let, <coughs> let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with our spirit. So welcome to the Mass today. It's the fourth week of Went Thursday. We really pray for this continuation that we have to keep on understanding our faith and get going deeper. Help us to understand what you want us to understand today. And help us to, as well, uh, continue this, this journey of purifying, of growing in holiness as we go closer to Holy Week. Not so far away now. So let's enter into our penitential act. We ask God to, to again, we recognize our sins, we say sorry for them, and we ask God to take them away. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done, and what, what I have failed, failed to do. Prove my fault, prove my fault, prove my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festival festivities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. So now we'll listen to a wonderful reading today about Moses and talking to God in that way. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord spoke to Moses, Go down now, because your people, whom you brought out of Egypt, have apostatized. They have been quick to leave the way I marked out for them. They have made themselves a calf of molten metal and have worshipped it and offer its sacrifice. Here is your God Israel, they have cried, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. I can see how headstrong these people are. Leave me now, my wrath shall blaze out against them and devour them. Of you, however, I will make a great nation. But Moses pleaded with the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your wrath blaze out against this people of yours, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with arm outstretched and mighty hand. Why let the Egyptians say, Ah, it was in treachery that he brought them out, to do them to death in the mountains and wipe them off the face of the earth. Leave your burning wrath, relent, and do not bring this disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your servants to whom your own self you swore and made this promise. I will make your offspring as many as the stars of heaven, and all this land which I promised I will give to your descendants, and it shall be their heritage forever. So the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, remember us for the love you bear your people. Lord, remember us for the love you bear your people. They fashioned a calf at Horeb and worshipped an image of metal, exchanging the God who was their glory for the image of a bull that eats grass. Lord, remember us for the love you bear your people. They forgot the God who was their saviour, who had done such great things in Egypt, such portents in the land of Ham, such marvels at the Red Sea. Lord, remember us for the love you bear your people. For this he said he would destroy them. But Moses, the man he had chosen, stood in the breach before him 
to turn back his anger from destruction. Lord, remember us for the love you bear your people. Word of God, glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. God loved the world so much he gave us his only son that all who believe in him might have eternal life. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, Were I to testify on my own behalf, my testimony would not be valid. But there is another witness who can speak on my behalf, and I know that his testimony is valid. You sent messengers to John, and he gave testimony to the truth. Not that I depend on human, wit- of, on human testimony, for it, is, for it is for your salvation that I speak of this. John was a lamp, a light and shining, and for a time you were content to enjoy the light that he gave. But my testimony is greater than John's. The works of my Father has given me to carry out. These same works of mine testify that the Father has sent me. Besides, the Father who sent me bears witness to me himself. You have never heard his voice, you have never seen his shape, and his word finds no home in you, because you do not believe in the one he has sent. You study the scriptures, believing that in them you have eternal life. Now these same scriptures testify to me, and yet you refuse to come to me for life. As for human approval, this means nothing to me, because besides I know you too well. You have no love of God in you. I have come in the name of my Father, and you refuse to accept me. If someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe since you look to one another for approval and are not concerned with the approval that comes from the one God? Do not imagine that I'm going to accuse you before the Father. You place your hopes on Moses, and Moses will be your accuser. If you really believed him, You would believe me too, since it is I that he was writing about. But if you refuse to believe what he wrote, how can you believe what I say? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we have this really interesting event that happened in the first reading in the Psalms, which has Moses uh, speaking about him, Uh, how he, he stood before God and, and argued for the people, that he, he, he made a, a clear plea to God to, to look after the people when they didn't deserve it. So in the, the psalm actually does a very good summary of it. So in the first uh, verse, it says that the people, they fashioned a calf, they, they worshipped the golden calf, they, they turned away from God. The second, the second part said that they forgot who God was, their saviour, and they forgot all the marvels he did, taking them through the Red Sea and everything. And he says, at the third part it says, For this he said he would destroy them, but Moses, the man he had chosen, stood in the breach before him to turn back his anger from destruction. So we see this moment in the first reading where Moses does stand before God as a, as a, a defender of the people. So the people didn't deserve it. The people, he only just gave them the Ten Commandments, went down while he was up on the, on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments from God. He came down to give it to the people and the people had already turned away and started worshipping the golden calf. And this is after God had taken them out of slavery, took them through the Red Sea, all that looked after them with food and everything else. And so the people had already turned away from God. And you hear how Jesus, oh Jesus, Moses, sorry, in this moment was standing in front of God and trying to defend this, the people that didn't deserve it. I've often had a bit of a thought about that and prayed... How could people really do that? I don't know if you've ever thought about lawyers, for example, who have to defend horrible people who have done horrible things, murderers and different other things. How can they actually stand there and, and defend them in different ways? And I remember when growing up, we had the case of Martin Bryant down in Tasmania. If you remember that, he went on a shooting spree, he killed like 35 people, horrible situation. And I remember like someone in my family said something like, 
what they should do with that person and just throw him out in the street and let everyone finish him off. That was like the, the mentality of like what, what that person deserved. And the, but no, he went, he goes, he had a lawyer who defended him. He had people who looked, in a sense, said he's still a person, he's still a human being, even if he's done horrible things. I've often thought a little bit about that. Like, it caught my attention that Moses, in this moment, the people were really guilty. So they deserved to be destroyed. But then, and it even, even stronger was that God actually offered Moses an offer in that moment. He says, let's forget about these people, they've done everything wrong, let's get rid of them, and I'll make a new nation out of you. So he actually, gives, out of your sons and out of your daughters, so he will be the new Abraham. The new, the new person who everyone would, would, would see as the father of all, the, all of the people of God. And Moses clearly in that moment says, God, no, that's, oh, that's not what we want. It's not what you want. It's not what, it's not what is needed for these people. And he stood up and, and asked for, for God to have mercy on the people. And I was praying about that, that there's probably two good reasons, or well, there's a lot of reasons you could look into it, but one reason I think why Moses stood up in this moment is because he knows himself who he is and his own mess, his own fact that he's a sinner. You know the story of Moses, he was a murderer. If you go back deep enough, like he killed an Egyptian, he ran away from it, he, he, he went into exile, he didn't face his, his own court, he didn't face his own justice that should have been against him. God still called him, despite that, to be the one to lead everyone to the right, to the promised land. So he knows what it's like actually to be a, a sinner. And I was thinking about that with us, us ourselves, like yourself, myself, <laughs> Why can we stand up for people who will do things wrong? Because I've done things so many wrong, so many things wrong all my life. And I'm not just talking about before I was a priest. <laughs> in the last week or two, I've still done things that I've really had to apologise to people for and felt really bad about and done things wrong. All of us, if you look at our own story, we know that we're not worthy of, of God's love either. So, of course, we can, we can ask other people to, or ask God to see other people in that light. The second reason is that Moses really appealed to God's goodness. I mean, his, 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 his reasoning was, you promised these people to look after them. You took them out of slavery. You, t- you said you're going to do all this. He didn't actually bring up Abraham, but he, said, he does. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your servants who you've made this promise to. You can't, you can't break that promise. Otherwise, you wouldn't be the God who you really are. So he was, he was appealing to, to the fact of who is God really? God's not a, a God who destroys people. God's someone who goes looking for the lost, saves them, brings them into something different, something new. In the same way that Moses was a murderer, he became the leader of the people. He knows that he was calling upon God to look after uh, the promises that he made. And remember who he is. Je- God spoke of this role in the gospel. Jesus was speaking about many things, but he was talking about Moses. He's saying, Moses pointed to me, to Jesus. When Moses stood in the breach and spoke up for the people and asked God to remember again the promise he made to the people and not look at the sins, but look instead at the the, the potential, at the redemption, that's what Jesus is. That's who Jesus is. That's Jesus' mission there in a very clear way. What is Jesus' mission? To stand in the breach between us and God. To be the the uniter of heaven and earth, to let us overcome our sins and get us back into into being the sons and daughters of God that we're meant to be. And I was was praying as well too that (laughs) Moses points to Jesus in so many ways. Jesus didn't have to die on the cross. Could have done it in a different way. He could have done it, as the Jews were saying, like in in this moment he was talking to them saying, you're looking for a saviour or, or a messiah to do it in your way, to be strong, to, to provide miracles, to do signs, to get rid of the Romans maybe. That's not the way that God wanted to do it. The way that God wanted to do it was to stand in the middle, to stand in the breach and take the wrath of, or, or take the sins on himself. And this is what we see in Jesus on the cross. He could have done it any other way. But his way of doing it was to be the innocent victim that saved all the people and brought them back into the communion with God that they're meant to have and as well with each other. 
he asked the Father to not condemn me, to not condemn you, not to condemn any of us. When we go to the Eucharist, we live this out again. We remember what Jesus did, what he's doing right now, what he's doing in our, our hearts, and we're asked to believe in it. Do you believe that this is the way that God saves us? And especially, do you, does it bring you joy? Does it make you grateful? Does it, get, does it open up your heart to be the real people of God that you're meant to be? I'd like to believe that the Israelites, after Moses saved them, in a sense, when Moses went up there and asked God to treat them well and remember that they're still his people, even though they did all the idolatry that they did, at least for a little while, they probably were really, really so grateful that they lived their life following God with all of their heart, with all their soul, with all their joy. Let's pray as well that when we go to the Eucharist, we receive that knowledge over and over again. This is what God does for us. Remember it, pray for it, become that message to other people as well too. Don't let them become lost either. But try and learn from Jesus if we can, in the same way that Moses. How can we stand in the breach of others as well too? How can we bring them to understand the fullness that we've got a God who doesn't condemn but saves? We've got a God who looks to bring people back, not to get rid of them. We've got a God who's faithful to promises, all of the promises that he's made for us in all of our lives. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be to God forever. I missed you this water and wine. Come to share in the divinity of Christ. He humbled himself to share in our Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be to God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for our praise and glory of his name, for our good and the goods of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil and always grant us your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both the virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection until until you come come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Anthony, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. I was becoming aware of was that every time we do anything for Lent, we're participating in the same way that Jesus did of being the innocent victim of standing in the breach for others. So it's nice to actually pray for that and and pray for the experience that we can do that with our prayer, with our fasting, with our almsgiving. We can participate in in trying to help many people maybe that don't even realise that we're, we're praying for them and helping them to come back to God. So let's pray, especially we can do that, we can do the will of the Father as we use the words Jesus gave us. At the Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will will be be done done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world, have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should end under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I will place my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people, says the Lord. The blood of uh, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. May this sacrament we have received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.